ready to discuss my favorite subject, which is color. Color is all of our favorite subjects. I think that that's one of the reasons we get into painting is so we can play with all of these colors. But here's the problem. We go into the art store and you know, to us, it's a candy store. So we go in and we decide, oh, I'm just going to look around and we walk by all of these colors and we just, we just can't keep our hands off of them. So we buy this color and this color and this color and this color and we bring it home and we are so excited we can't stand it. So we are going to paint a painting and we're pulling out all these colors and a, col a couple of the colors that we already have. And then we can't figure out why the painting doesn't hold together. And it's because we have too many colors. So what I'm going to do today is to show you how I use three colors to do almost everything. Now I can't get any of the primaries, can't get a blue, can't get a red, and I can't get a yellow, a true one of those. So those you do have to buy. Now do I do use other colors besides these three? Yes, but I really got down to learning these colors so that I would know exactly what I could get. And this is what I suggest for you. So that's, that's what we're going to do this morning. And um, I'm going to put out these colors. And this is a uh, nickel azo gold. And by the way, that will end up being your favorite, favorite of all colors. It is fabulous. And um, it's one of those colors that I can't do without. Period. No question. So this is uh, quinacridone magenta. And for those that don't know this, quinacridone means transparent. So you'll see it in oils, you'll see it in watercolors, you'll see it in, uh, in the acrylics, and it does mean uh, transparent. So that's, that's good to know because that you automatically know that that's a transparent color and you don't have to worry about it. This one is a uh, turquoise thalo very staining gonna have to be really careful with this but it's a beautiful color now black and white are free so I don't count them and I am using gesso instead of paint and the reason is I like things to be simple and I uh, travel a lot and and do demos so I want I don't want to carry a whole lot. Plus, I like it better. I, I really do. It does, has this wonderful, uh, it, it's not shiny. So it kind of cuts that. So anyway, a jar of black like this, unless you do a lot of demos, it's going to last you a long time. So now what we're going to do is to take the quinacridone. We're going to put the three transparents down at, just as they are. Isn't that gorgeous? That's really pretty. And you can make these so much lighter. You can make them... You know, just add water, look at that. You add water and it's just really much lighter and you can make it even more intense but not adding any water at all. Magenta, really rich colors so that when you do add other colors, it's really, uh, it helps them, it's not weak. And then this is your really strong color, your turquoise, phthalo turquoise. Okay, now we've got our three colors. Now if we do white with this, you know what we're going to end up getting. We're going to end up getting just a, 
a lighter version of the gold. But, hang on just a minute. I'm going to, okay, here you go with just the white in it. But now let's add a touch of black. And a touch is all you need. Notice that I don't go this way into the uh, any color. I go under, under the under the color so that I can I have a little bit more control. And see, even with that, look at that, that's huge. But let's get the black. And we're going to get a totally different color and different value. Now I could make this a much lighter value, but isn't that, isn't that gorgeous? It's, it's a very sophisticated color versus this is a little sweet and this is much more sophisticated. So now let's do the same with the magenta, which If now I'm going to, well, I'll add a little bit more here. Now this is Pepto-Bismol pink, but in my workshops, I say, I don't want to see any of this pink in your painting and have a touch. I call it panty pink and people remember, oh my gosh, I don't want that in my, in my painting because it is too raw. It is just too raw. Whereas if you get this, that's not so raw. But anyway, that, that's just my opinion. If, um, if I was asked to do a commission with a lot of pink, they, were going, they would have to pay for it up front because I would not be able to get it to the, I wouldn't be able to sell it. So... Just keep things like that in mind. Okay, now I'm going to do the thalo turquoise with, with white. And I'm going to get this really pretty turquoisey blue. But it's matte. Add a little bit, and that's a lot, but add a little bit of the of the uh, black, and look what I look what I can get is this stunning gray. I mean that is. You would buy that in a tube, and right here you have it, and that's really pretty fabulous. But now, what if we want to get a rust color, uh, a real pretty rust? Let's mix the gold and the magenta. And we are going to get an, another color that you would buy in the store. And that's this. This is so rich and so gorgeous that it just knocks your socks off. But because you have mixed two trans, transparent colors, this is transparent. Now, the other thing, too, is that you can mix as many transparent colors as you want, and you're not going to get you're not going to get an opaque or mud. It's going to continue to just get rich. Okay, let's say we want uh, we want green. We want a really pretty green. So let's do the gold, and let's do the thalo turquoise. And you can get a gorgeous um, olive, but you can get a beautiful uh, emerald. Look at that. That is so pretty. And look at that. Isn't that pretty? Um, now we can get a really fabulous and wonderful purple. Everybody likes purple. Well, maybe not everybody, but I do. All right. Now we can do a purple that's more on the magenta side. Isn't that pretty? 
and we can do a purple that's more on the phthalo turquoise side. Totally different, same two colors. All of these are transparent colors and they're just luscious. So you've heard me mention no name colors. No name colors are colors of where you walk into a show and you look across the room and you see this painting and you love it and you walk over and you think, how did they get that color? What is that? You know, and you, what we really want to do is go to the, go to the art store and buy that tube of paint, but that it's a mixture. It's a mixture of, of wonderful colors and we are going to get so many. I, you can get hundreds of no name colors with these three colors plus black and white. And that's huge. That's huge. So this is what we're going to end up doing. Now, I also know that everybody's saying, oh my, how do I keep my paints organized? Well, this is how I keep my paints organized. <laughs> I just mix. I just mix because I have three colors. I have nothing, there's nothing wrong with just messing up. I want to play. I want to find a color that, that no one else has right now. Look at that. that gorgeous. And that's just mixing some more white with this, these two things here. Now, what if these two colors, what if I mixed a little purple into this? Totally different. All right, what if I mixed more white with the purple? You see how these, these nuances, and I'm not measuring, I'm not saying, okay, I'm gonna put a little bit of this to get that. No, you've got three colors, you're not going to go wrong. Now, I had added some of the rust, meaning that I had the gold and the magenta mixed together to get that. Let's see what we're going to have. Let's just add a little bit on my brush to this pink and see what happens. Add a little bit of water here. Now, it's very similar to that, but it has now, it has a pink overcast, which is beautiful. So... Let's add some of the blue. And I haven't added any white yet. I mean, any black. I've added white. But let's add some black. It's really a lot. And let's add some, well, let's put this color down and see what it is. It's a beautiful gray. Let's add some gold. Do you see, do you see the change? Do you see how everything, because you mix it together, you're getting these colors that you wouldn't normally get if you just mix two colors. Add a little bit of pink or the magenta. Has, see, this is more yellow. This has more pink in it. And to this same pile, we will add turquoise. Ooh, I like that. Now, a question always comes up, how do I find one of these colors? Again, I need a little bit more. How do I get them? So, number one, you don't need to get it exact. You need to just get it close. 
and with three colors you can do that. So let's let's try and and make this color right here. I know I had um, pink in it. I know I had uh, gold in it. And I'm going to show you how I, I don't think this is it, but it's close. Because this is going to dry darker and it'll get, it'll get to that shade. Um, and I could add a touch of black, but I don't want to. I kind of like that. But let's, here's the reason why I don't want to do that. If I had to, to marry these three, like, okay, I want, I want to get a color exact. Well, I take the side of my brush, not the flat, but the side. And, okay, I have too much in my brush. And I kind of go like this. And I don't cover it. Now, see, this is a totally different color. So... This is, this is still going to look really good. Now, why does it look really good? Is because you've got a color underneath that's showing through and is adding interest. So this is, this is really, okay, let's take, let's take this and put it over one of these. Because now I'm going to have this beautiful green showing through. And I can put it over like this. Or I could put it over by a thin wash. And that would be like this. But leaving some of the green showing through. Because that, as I say, gives depth. It gives depth. Now, what if I wanted to add... Okay, remember I said this was a little bit uh, sweet? Well, let's just do, if I add this, you know what I'm going to get. I'm going to get a green. But, but if I get a green and I leave a touch of that, it's going to be really pretty. And then you can kind of blob if you want to. And if that is too bright, once everything is done, you could go over that. But now let's, let's show how a opaque will make a transparent really sing. It's amazing how much is in this brush. <laughs> I'm gonna divide the two yellows because they were so different. That this being a neutral, it is just popping a neutral opaque it is just popping these wonderful colors. Look at that. See how they pop? I mean, they're just, they're pretty darn fantastic. And look at, look at all of these. And I could have gone on on many, many sheets of paper and gotten different values of different different values of different colors. The other thing that I do is that once I have this, let's say I've got this down in a large shape because your no-name colors are usually on the outside of the outside shapes of your painting. So I don't ever like it. It's too dull. I mean, I've got these gorgeous transparents and now I'm going to put this opaque here and it's going to be dead. 
So what I'm going to do, uh, what I always do is I put a transparent over it. But when I put a transparent over it, I always leave a little bit of that to show, as I say, to give a little bit of depth. So let's do that to kind of show you. Because I, you know, it's not uh, that I want a big difference. It's that when this dries, I want this to have more life. And let's say that I don't, I don't like what I put on there. Guess what? It's acrylic. I can put anything I want on there. I can put it on again. This one kind of pulled up. It, this is a little wet underneath, so it's picking up. But you, you can see what I'm meaning here. Because right now, this is a totally different color than it was because I put a transparent over it. I may put five more. I may put an opaque over this, leaving, leaving some of these colors to show through. Usually, my paintings have at between eight and 12 layers because I can't. I want that glow. I want that depth. I want, I want, um, I want it to have personality, and that's the way that I know how to get it. So now, for your assignment, is that I want you to do play. I want you to play with this. I, you know, a lot of people would want to get out a piece of paper and they write down, I mix this to get this. Don't do that. Just mix because you've got three colors. It's okay. Now, if you have to do that, that's fine. But because uh, at the beginning, sometimes we, we forget. But I want to know which you like the best. And I also want to know how many no-name colors were you able to get? Because it's a lot. And then I want to know which one of your no-name colors is your favorite. And that one's going to be hard. So I will see you in the next video. And uh, I want you to have fun. And just mix. Just have fun. Don't think. Just go for it. See you then.